Dear students, welcome to your physics class. Today your topic is force and pressure. This is your first class. And what is force and what is pressure? We'll discuss in details. Let us discuss first what is force. Force is uh, a term which is not new for you. You might have heard about force. And what is force? So normally, what you know, when you push an object or pull an object, you say we are applying a force. When you are pushing an object, the we are applying a force away from yourself. When you are pulling an object, you are exerting a force towards yourself. That means pushing or pulling, these are the modes of application of force. How force is applied? Suppose you take a rubber band, pull it, stretch it, that means here you say force is applied. Suppose you take a sponge, compress it, a force is applied. That means this is a force. Now the question is, can a non-living object exert the force? I will give some examples. Suppose in a storm or a wind is blowing, you are standing there. And you may feel that wind is applying a force, pushing or pulling you. That means the force is exerted by the wind. Now, another uh, small example. Suppose you take uh, a plastic comb and dry with uh, you comb it with your dry hair. So when you rub your plastic comb with a dry hair and it is brought uh, near small small pieces of paper, you will see the plastic comb will attract small pieces of paper. That means the comb also takes up the force. Suppose you take one magnet and magnet is brought near an iron nail, it will attract the iron nail. That means the magnet will exert a force on the iron nail. Similarly, you take a suppose a plastic ball or a cork and you press it inside water. What will happen? It will come up. That means here the water exerts a force on the cork or the ball to come up. Another example, suppose I will say, suppose a block, a piece of wood, it is suspended from a rope. That means here the force is exerted by the block on the rope. Rope also exerted force on the block. That means living as well as the non-living objects exert a force. And the force, force is measured by a unit called a Newton. This is the standard unit of force that is Newton. And you will see later on, one Newton is the force required to hold an object of mass 102 gram near the earth surface. That we will see later on. Then, force is a vector quantity. The physical quantities, those are uh, used to describe the physical phenomena, can be classified into two categories. Scalar quantity and vector quantity. Scalar quantity, the physical quantity is having only the numerical value or magnitude. Magnitude is the numerical value of a physical quantity. That is called its magnitude. And vector quantities are those that are having both magnitude as well as direction. And force is a vector quantity. Because the direction is important here. In which direction the force is applied. Now suppose two bodies are there. I would say two bodies are there. This is body A, this is another body B. Suppose A exerts a force on B, B exerts a force also on A. That means force is nothing but a mutual interaction between two objects. Suppose a book is placed on the table. The table exerts a force on the block in the upper direction to hold it. And the book also exerts a force 
on the table in the downward direction. That is nothing but the force due to gravity. I have discussed in detail about the force due to gravity later on. So that means the force is the mutual interaction between two objects. When two bodies are there, for example, this one. Previous example, suppose a block is suspended. Suppose uh, this is a rigid support and a string is there and a block is suspended here. The block exerts a force on the string. The string exerts a force on a block to hold it. The string exerts a force on the block to hold it. And the block force exerts a force on the string so that the string will be tight and stretched. The stretching may be very small, still then it applies a force. And these two forces are equal and opposite. And this is given by your Newton's third law of motion. That's a very important law. Suppose this body A exerts a force F on block B. So B also exerts a force on block A that is minus F because it is in opposite direction. And if you add then net force will be zero. So this is given by Newton's third law. In the Newton's third law, you will see that when two bodies exert force on each other, they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Sometimes they are called action-reaction pair. If A is the action, minus F is the reaction. And remember one more point that action and reaction always act on different bodies. So now I told you the different examples of applying the force and the unit of force that is Newton. This is your uh, Newton's third law. And now, what are the different forces those are encountered in physics? They can be grouped into four categories. Then what are the four different types of force? We will discuss one by one here. First one is the gravitational force. Second one is electromagnetic force. Third one is strong nuclear force. Fourth one is weak nuclear force. That means whatever forces that are encountered in physics, they are classified or group into four categories this way. One is the gravitational force, then electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force. Now we will discuss uh, different kind of forces one by one. Then what is gravitational force? First one is gravitational force. Then what is gravitational force? You might have seen, suppose uh, a body is thrown vertically upwards. What will happen? It will fall down. Why it is coming down? This is due to force. Formation of tides, the formation of day and night, the revolution of path around sun, rotation of path around itself. There are several examples. This is due to force called a gravitational force. That means this gravitational force is due to their mass. So one of the scientists named Newton said that every object in the universe attracts every object with a force that is called gravitational force. And that force between the any two objects depends upon their mass and also the distance between the two objects. And it is, remember, it is a very weak force, it is the weakest force in nature. And the force between, suppose two objects are there, I will say two objects A and B, they are uh, separated by a distance R, mass of first body is M1, second body is M2, what is the force between them? The magnitude of the force between the two objects is given by some constant G, M1, M2 by R square. And G is a constant, that is called universal gravitational constant. 
universal gravitational constant is the value same for all the bodies in the universe. That's why it is said, it is called that the universal gravitational constant and the value is given by G is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 and m2 kg minus 2. Newton square meter into kg minus 2. This value is fixed for all the bodies in the universe. And using this formula, you can calculate the force between any two objects in the universe. And I will tell you some properties of this gravitational force. First one, the gravitational force, the weakest force in nature. That means, if the body is not very large, we cannot feel it. Suppose on the earth. As the earth is very large, we can exert the force of earth on any object. But suppose you take uh, two pens, you cannot, uh, you can't see, you cannot uh, understand the force between the two pens. You can feel it. But we can feel the force on earth on any other object because earth is a very large object. So it is the weakest force in nature is the gravitational force. Second one, gravitational force is always an attractive force. And gravitational force depends upon mass of the two objects and the distance between their centers. And the gravitational force acts along the line joining the center of the two bodies. That's why the gravitational force is called central force. Central force means a force that acts along the line joining the center of the two bodies that is called a central force. The gravitational force cannot be repulsive, it is always attractive. And suppose there are number of objects, suppose uh, one mass M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, like that, number of masses are there. You want to calculate the net force on a given mass. How to calculate? You will apply a formula or a principle called principle of superposition. That means you have to add the forces to get the main force on a given object. How forces can be added, you will see later on. Using the laws of vectorization. There are some laws and force is a vector quantity, I already told you. So as it is a vector quantity, you cannot add simply. So you have to add then using the laws of vectorization. These are some of the properties of the gravitational force. So, the gravitational force, the particles may exert electromagnetic force. Suppose that example I told you, when a plastic comb rubbed with dry hair, it may attract small pieces of paper. That force of attraction is an electromagnetic. Similarly, so many other examples are there. Suppose a glass rod will rub with seal, plastic comb rub with dry hair, as I told. Then amber with linen cloth, ebonite with cat's fur. Many examples are there when one body is rubbed with other, it may attract small light objects, like pieces of paper. That force is called electromagnetic force. Now, if you take two charged particles, suppose uh, having charges Q1 and Q2, in that case they are called the charged. And they are the charged particles. Glass rod with silk, glass rod is charged, silk also charged. And if you are taking two charged particles, having charges Q1 and Q2, separate by distance R, the force between them is given by F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not Q1, Q2 by R square. Q1 and Q2 are the magnitude of the two charges. This law is called Coulomb's law and the force is also called Coulomb force. And using this one, this formula you can calculate the force between two, two charge particles. That is an electromagnetic force. And what is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught? This epsilon naught is called permittivity of free space or vacuum. Permittivity. Or it is the nature of a medium. It is unlike the gravitational force. Gravitational force between two objects does not depend upon the nature of the medium where they are placed. But 
the electromagnetic force or force field to charge to charge particles depends on the nature of the medium where they are placed. And the electromagnetic force between two charged particles when they are in motion, they are little more complicated. We will not discuss now here. And uh, you know the ordinary matter consists of electrons, the particles like electrons, protons, neutrons. And inside an atom, the matter consists of atoms. Inside the atom, there are two parts. One is the central part called nucleus. And the electrons are surrounding the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, protons and neutrons are present. And inside an atom, the atom is balanced or in equilibrium due to the force between protons and electrons. And protons has the charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb of positive charge, and electron has a charge of minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and the force between electrons force between the electron and proton so there are all the electromagnetic forces and inside the atoms they are hold by the electromagnetic force and inside matter atoms or molecules they are held together by the electromagnetic force is that the different type of electromagnetic forces. Besides this, in your, ah, one more thing, the electromagnetic force may be attractive, may be repulsive, but a gravitational force is always attractive. Suppose you take charged particles, the charges are of two types, one is a positive charge, the other is negative charge. If you take two like charges, like one positive charge and another positive charge, they will be repelled. If one positive charge, one negative charge, they will attract. That means the electromagnetic force either it will be repulsive or attractive. Besides this, you may encounter the electromagnetic force in your day to day life. In day to day life, also electromagnetic force exists. Not only in sodium between the atoms and molecules only. Then I will give you some examples where force between two surfaces in contact, tensor in a string or a rope, force due to a string, these are the existence of the electromagnetic force in day to day life. Let us discuss one by one, forces between two surfaces in contact. Suppose uh, a block is placed on the table, on the table a block is placed, so when a block is placed on the table, the atoms or molecules of the blood exert a force on the atoms or molecules of the table. They exert when they are coming in contact. That force is a contact force. So they exert a force on each other. That type of that force is also electromagnetic. And normally, if you see if a table is there and a block is placed over it, you will see normally. The force acts along the their common nerve, and also there may be a component parallel to the surfaces in contact. That parallel component of the contact force is called force of friction. Force of friction is a type of electromagnetic force. That means when one body is placed on the other, we want to move it. So you will feel an opposing force. That opposing force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces that is called force of friction. The force of friction is due to the interaction between the atoms or molecules when they are in contact. This is one example. Second one, tension in a string or a rope. Suppose an object is suspended, a heavy object is suspended by the means of a string. When it is suspended by a string, it is a heavy object. The molecules or atoms of the string at the lower end exert a force on the atoms or molecules or the charged particles which are present inside the blood, they interact among themselves, themselves. So that's why the string holds the blood. And atoms or molecules of the blood also exert a force on atoms or molecules of the string. 
at the lower end. That force is also electromagnetic force. Another example, force will be a screen. Suppose a screen is there, I will say this is a rigid support and a screen is there. You know what is a screen? You might have seen a dot pen, inside the dot pen a screen is there. Screen means a wire which is coiled, that is called a screen. If I connect a block or a mask on the screen, the screen will exert a force on the block. When it is pulled towards the right or pushed towards the left. Suppose when it is pulled towards the right, then a force is exerted there. That means this screen will try to bring it back. That means when you release, it will return back to its original position. That force, the screen force, that is also an electromagnetic force. This is due to the particles or the charged particles or atoms molecules present at the one end of this screen to the atoms or molecules present in the world. And this force which brings it back to the original position that is called the restoring force. And it is found that the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. So F, if the restoring force is F, it is proportional to X. And we can write F is equal to minus Kx. X is the displacement. Suppose it is cooled, suppose this is the original position. It's so the force is proportional to the displacement. And that means we can write F is equal to minus Kx, where X is the displacement from the original position and k is the proportionally constant that is called force constant or spring constant it is the nature of the material of the stream and this restoring force provided by the stream that is also an example of electromagnetic force so here f is equal to minus k the negative sign is that that restoring force always opposes the displacement suppose the spring is pulled towards right, the restoring force acts towards left. When it is pushed towards left, the restoring force acts towards right. So these are the different types of electromagnetic force. Those are encountered in your day to day life. So inside the very small space, how the protons and neutrons are present. The repulsive force is very large, but they are staying in a very small space. That means there must be another force, a strong force, which balances this electromagnetic force. So, this force is called nuclear force. Nuclear force, why it is called nuclear force? Because it acts inside the nucleus. And the protons, neutrons, those present inside the nucleus, they are called nucleons. And the force between nucleons is called a nuclear force. And it is the strongest force in nature. And some other properties are also there. It is the strongest force. It is attractive. It is also always attractive because it balances the repulsive force. And there may be three types of nuclear force. The force between two protons. Proton-proton force, proton-neutron force, neutron-neutron force. Three types of nuclear force are there. And it is a short range force. Short range means it acts only inside the nucleus. That's why it's a short range. But if we compare gravitational force and the electromagnetic force, they are the wrong range. Imagine Sun and Earth very far away from each other, but there is a force, gravitational force. That is long range force. Whereas nuclear force is a short range force. And another property is there. That is charge independent. Nuclear force does not depend upon the charge. The force between two protons, force between proton and neutron, or force between neutrons, so they are same. They are charge independent. And it is also called a saturated force. Saturated force means one nucleon, that means proton or neutron, it attracts only its nearest neighbor, those present nearby. And if you compare, suppose, uh, nuclear force between two protons and uh, the electromagnetic force between two protons, it will be 10 to the power 39 times stronger. That means it is a very 
very strong force. The nuclear force is the strongest force known in nature. Yet another uh, kind of force encountered when the reaction is involving proton, neutron or electron dexterous. A neutron can change into itself into a proton and simultaneously it can emit an electron and another particle called antineutrino. This process is called beta minus decay. Beta minus decay it is one type of nuclear reaction. Similarly, a proton can convert itself into a neutron by emitting a particle called a positron and another particle called antineutrino. This is called beta plus decay. In this type of reactions, the forces involved are called weak nuclear forces. And this weak nuclear force, the name is given weak, but it is not weaker than the gravitational force. It is stronger than the gravitational force. And it is a short range force. So these forces are involved only for short range when those reactions are involved. So these are the different type of forces we have discussed here. And if you compare the strength of these four type of forces, if you say this is gravitational force, this is for weak nuclear force, this is for the electromagnetic force, this is for strong nuclear force. That means, as I told you earlier, the strong nuclear force is 10 to the power 39 times stronger than the gravitational force. Similarly, electromagnetic force is 10 to the power 37 times stronger than the gravitational force. Weak nuclear force is 10 to the power 26 times stronger than the gravitational force. That means gravitational force is the weakest force in nature. So this is all about the different type of forces.